Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined today by Aaron and Marissa, and we're back with another Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 5 spoiler discussion. Before we get into the episode, I want to let you guys know that you can follow us on iTunes at the Nerd Soup Podcast and Spotify. You can listen to us there and SoundCloud as well. Follow us on Twitter at nerdsoup 4 u and send us your questions at gmail.com, nerdsoup 4 u We might answer some of those questions. We've been getting a lot of them because we don't talk enough about Game of Thrones on this channel. So <laughs> we want to get you guys involved. So, yeah, I mean, like I always say, me and Aaron did our review. We uh, posted that a couple days ago. So now we have Marissa here, and we're going to get her thoughts on the episode. You've been very high on the season. So <laughs> episode five, The Bells. Great title. What did you think? I hated it. <laughs> um, this is the first episode I think well the entire time I've been watching Game of Thrones and I watched I started watching the show uh, right after season six ended so I basically binged seasons one through six um, and seven was the first one that I watched live this episode was the first time I've ever been watching an episode and thought I hate this while I was watching it it's I have to agree with that because I did the same thing it was the first time I watched an episode where I verbally said out loud to the people I was watching with I don't like this <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the first time that Game of Thrones has ever taken me out of the episode. What were your problems? What were your biggest problems with the um, episode? My biggest problem is that the episode felt hollow. I can tell where they wanted the emotional impact or the punch, and I didn't get it. It was beautiful. A lot of scenes looked really cool. When Danny is looking over the city and you hear the bells and people saying, like, ring the bells, ring the bells, surrender, and you see, like, her, her facial expressions, I thought that was great. But I also didn't believe that she would just go and burn the whole city after that. It was like such a, a disconnect there. I also, Arya's scenes when, she, when everything is like going crazy and she's running through the city, I enjoyed those. But I was also thinking, what is Arya doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she's here to kill the queen. And she immediately gave that up. It was like, at the end of the last episode, she was leaving. And she's like, I'm going to go kill Cersei. And the Hound's like, okay. And then all of a sudden the Hound's like, actually, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you should know go what? home now. Now that we're here, turn around and go back. It's, they're literally in the castle. Well, I don't think they expect fucking hellfire to be raining from the sky. Yeah, it's so weird like just trying to grasp this episode. Cause there's... Because you hate it, but you don't want to admit it. <laughs> no, no, because I, I hate certain aspects of it, but I love everything else. Like you were talking about Ari and John running in the street. Just like while it was going on, but then I remembered why it was happening, and I was kind of got sad again. Yeah. It's weird because a lot of people have made this like, comparison just seeing how divisive this uh, this season has be has been, but like I remember when I first saw the Last Jedi, I was disappointed. But after I thought about it for a day and watched it again, I kind of I, I still didn't love it, but I kind of like expecting, knowing what was going to happen and expecting that going in a second time, I kind of liked it a little bit more. So I figured after this episode, I'm like, all right, let me think about it for a day. I'll sleep on it, see what everyone else is saying, um, get different perspectives, re uh, watch it again, and maybe. I'll have a like a clearer thought in my head. That didn't happen. <laughs> I feel the exact same way, but much worse now. It's like I still am so confused because I love so much of the episode, but don't like a lot of it too. It's I I liked I liked the concept of Mad Queen Daenerys. Love it. Same. But in that moment when the bells are ringing and they won, and then she still decided to do it, it doesn't line up for me. Yeah, I I watched that. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. She wouldn't do this. I think two things you can point to. I think if, it, like we said on our review, if they were losing and she did that, you can kind of, you can understand that. Her seeing all she worked for and wanted to obtain disappear in front of her, causing her to destroy King's Landing, that makes more sense. If this was a 10 episode season and Masande dies last episode and you have three episodes to watch her dissolve into this madness where she is, she's so paranoid kills Varys, now she doesn't trust Jon and Tyrion, and it's just all coming down on her, and that's played out over a longer stretch, and then that happened, I think it works a lot better, too. Because we just see here, Tyrion goes up, We obviously we see the effects, and you, you can kind of see it coming, but it's just, it happened this is, right then and there. When I was watching that scene of her really taking everything in, I could tell they wanted me to see the snap. I could understand, like, at some level, she was looking, she's won, but it's like a hollow victory. She doesn't feel like she's really won anything. And mm -hmm. so now she just kind of like goes crazy. I saw that that's what they were doing and that's what they wanted me to believe. And I didn't, I didn't believe it. No, I don't. Yeah, I didn't believe it either. I think if she had gone for the Red Keep, just went for Cersei, it would have been <laughs> 10 that's times better than it was. you want to get. 
she yeah, didn't that's even get the person who just killed she's... your best friend. Yeah, and she just completely disregarded her for slaughtering innocents. Like, it... and you have to <gasps> when you compare it to other characters in the show, she's not the only person who has lost people. I guess Arya is a character who's not as impulsive, but Arya has been known to kill a fool or two. <laughs> when Arya came back to Westeros, she had one goal in mind: kill the Freys, kill the Lannisters. That's it. It wasn't about killing innocent people. She has that scene where she sits down with the Lannister soldiers and she realizes, oh, these are just decent men who have been thrown into this war against their will. They and have Ed no Sheeran. choice but to fight. And Ed Sheeran, she didn't kill Ed Sheeran. She should have, <laughs> but she didn't. She's lost her mother, her brother, the scene with the Hound and Brienne where he's breaking down everything that this character has lost. People have lost things in the show, but they don't take it out on innocence. You can make the case that there are characters who have lost more than Daenerys. And that's why that moment makes no sense because you have the person sitting there in a red dress she's literally a red shirt she's a giant target in a <laughs> giant tower i just beheaded your best friend i'm the one who provoked you no i'm gonna start at the back of the line <laughs> and murder everybody else and then maybe i'll get to you it's, that's why it, it was just too abrupt but i guess too like when we hear varus flip a coin right you're just maybe she's just crazy and those are what that that was enough so to the coin was flipped off. very late it's been well, in the air <laughs> for what really 20, long 21 time. years <laughs> she obviously needed a catalyst but yeah I, I agree with you but i'm just saying like maybe we're just trying to rationalize something that isn't rational when you when you get into her mind i think as a though, Targaryen. i don't i'm just but there could have been a different... better way to illustrate how yes. like on knife's edge she was say like the coin is just like chilling in the middle not on either side i think there could have been a <laughs> yeah it could have there could have been a better way to show her visibly like teetering in either direction well I, i've seen yeah, because when she teeters it's like oh should i kill this person who had slaves well I've, I don't also know. like the show I've... itself has the audience and the show has praised her for the stuff that she's done it hasn't been like the narrative is rejecting her for the choices she's made not really every time she's like taken people out or burn people alive we've been like yeah go daenerys and then now it's everyone around her going, she's crazy. But she's, she, I, I think I said this last week, she's doing most of the same stuff. And then she decides to burn King's Landing, which is not what she's done before. Well, here's the meme I've seen going around. It's like the Pikachu surprise. Like, if we should have saw this coming. And it goes season one through season eight of things she's done. Okay, so tell us each thing that she did to for make each this season. reasonable. Right. It's the foreshadowing. Burns Miri Mazder. The woman who killed her child and husband. Yes. One person. Justifiable. Yes. Burns the House of the Undying. The House of the Undying. Oh, the warlocks who kidnapped her dragon, those freaks with the purple lips. <laughs> and put her in Who wanted chains. to yeah. keep her there for thousands of years. Yes, she did that. Right. Burns Astapor. Oh, Astapor, another slave city. Wow, the home of the Unsullied, right? Yep. The people that would rip off the cocks and balls of children and force them to become soldiers. Psychopath. <laughs> Crucifies the masters of marine. Ah, slave owners. Well, you know, some of them were against the slavery. <laughs> And, and that's that's the only thing that she's done that's sort of been in contention. How many miles Not did morally. she walk and see children yes. being cr- <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> you can, she just did something that and was that worse was, than that. It wasn't even like morally what she did was wrong. It was like politically they were like, maybe don't do this. Yeah, it's like you need the rich to rule, yeah. so don't kill all of them. Um, burns the Maronese nobleman. I guess that's when in, in the... That might be the worst thing that she's ever done. She, oh, with uh, Lorac, right? When they're just yeah. like... Here, he just throws one in there and it's like, oh, no one's going to tell me what I need to hear. Even though this guy might not even know. He's just some random dude. Okay. But that was like a strong arm. Like, you know, I'm sure FDR. <laughs> <laughs> FDR burned a few people yeah, alive in his day. Burns Vase Dothrak. Once again, a bunch of rapists <laughs> yeah. who run around the Essos pillaging, <laughs> killing people. They wanted to kill her. Yeah. So it's always when she's being attacked or she's killing people that are terrible. This is my favorite. Burns the wagon train. You know, when, when you're... Well, like, I mean, it was a nice wagon. It's, it's war. But you also, know? that was, that was <laughs> it's, like the it's only like a good battle. episode of season It's a surprise seven. attack. That happens all the time in war. Um, but what they should be pointing to is the scene on the beach on Dragonstone. Yeah. When she says that she's just going to fly to the Red Keep and burn it to the ground, and John convinces her not to. That's mm-hmm. the moment where, yeah, a lot of her advisors have been Even then, she says she's going to go to the Red Keep and burn it to the ground, not literally turn King's Landing into a barbecue. <laughs> She fried up everybody. (laughs) No, the foreshadowing, I've always said it because I never thought it was actually going to happen in the book or show. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was a nice callback to her father. And if you know about Aris, that was a gradual descent into madness for much less, actually. But it was it's more convincing because it was years in the making until he finally lost it 
It was his kidnapping. It was his relationship with Tywin deteriorating. It was all these different things. But Daenerys has been in the game for years now, and I she's also, known as a she's, she's made threats. Uh, well, they point to the when she's in the Garden of Bones, right? When yes. she's outside of Quarth. This is a 16-year-old starving child who's like <laughs> 10 electrolytes away from death. Get her a Gatorade. She'd be fine. She's like, well, my dragons are big. We're going to come beat you guys up. It's, she's like a little girl yelling at these men who are mocking her. Mm-hmm. And then one gives her a chance. Zoro Zondaxo, shout out. Mahershala <laughs> Ali tried out for that role. Didn't get it. And her dragons are like cats in that scene. <laughs> so well, It's like, yeah, even when she, when, he, when she locked him into that vault. That was gangster. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, he deserved that. Um, and also, <laughs> he tried to murder her. And I think I, I just wish it like, I don't hate the concept, but more, they should have had more gray area within her arc where, like you said, they frame it as victories. And she does get pushed back from her advisors, but they're never like, they do push back, but it's like you said, it's more for political gain or like what you should do. Her advisors are never really like, what you're doing is morally wrong. They're like, this is, this would put you at a political disadvantage. Well, um, not until later when the Tyrion stuff and she does like threaten to. You saw that tweet about Tyrion saying, but your grace, what about the Geneva Convention? <laughs> I love Lindsay Ellis. <laughs> She's great. <weird. laughs> but uh, I think there's a difference between foreshadowing and then actually creating the tension mm. necessary. Yeah. But for, I never got the... to make this like I'm 100 percent into Mad Queen Daenerys. Like I like that when it happened, I didn't believe it. I think and I, I think Lindsay Ellis actually might have tweeted something about this. Um. I think for the podcast. Mad Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Lindsay Ellis, at Lindsay Ellis. <laughs> um, I think for us for us to have fully bought into Mad Queen Daenerys, we should have been more wary when she was coming to Westeros. I think if we had been kind of uncertain about what she was going to do and we didn't like support her coming and taking the throne. Um, because we, we just saw Cersei massacre a church. Yeah. Well, we which were also, cheering for Daenerys There's been no like well, visible she... fallout of her blowing up the Sept. No. When Cersei blew it up, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> but that was like more, that for her character, like that's what she needed to do to get out of that situation. Yeah. They, they, the main thing is they were ringing the fucking bells. We surrender. You win. All right. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. All the memes have been great, man. The one about her with the AirPods and yeah. oh, Daenerys can't hear the bells. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and everything surrounding it too. I lo- I love the lead up. I love the beginning. I love the battle. I love how she learned finally how to fight with her dragon. We saw the full might of what having this advantage in Westeros means. How Aegon the Con- Conqueror was able to rule the Seven Kingdoms with three dragons and a small army. And I mean, the other two dragons that died were there were surprises. She wasn't expecting the Night King to be able to do what he did to uh, Viserion, and she. What we understand is she didn't know Euron would be there. So it was. <laughs> I love that meme. That meme has been amazing. So, yeah. So this is like the only. This and is the time where she forget knew. about the Iron Fleet, Your Grace. Well, she had a plan and like she knew what she wanted to do. And you saw just that advantage that she can have. Maybe you're... she's not crazy. Maybe she just has ADHD. She's just not paying attention to anything <laughs> anybody says. And she's saying, oh, when the bells ring, burn the city. Got it. So I loved all of that. I loved when she opens the gate. What a beautiful shot. But what shot. do you say to people that the foreshadowing, the buildup just worked for them? Because some people are convinced it, of the turn. When we did the revisit, we, we, we stopped at all those scenes. And we're like, this could be a, a little hint for Mad Queen, possibly. And we'd be like, ah, I don't know, because she never really, everything she did was out of, I guess, kindness, wanting to help people. Wanting to, you know, the everyday regular person that gets abused by the rich and powerful she was kind of fighting for them. And you're like, oh. That's the thing. It's like these people didn't do anything to you. And she keeps yeah. talking about, oh, they love you. Do they love John in the South? They don't even know who these people are for the most part. But we part. don't even really know None how they feel read. about Cersei. <laughs> right. It's yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Probably not too hot. Right? I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> you said we never saw the fallout for what she did to the Sept of Baylor. They just kind of all accepted her as the queen. Like war has been going on pretty consistently in Westeros. Westeros has to be ravaged at this point. If Daenerys were to win, what does she have to work with? And like, we don't know. No, we don't know. Yeah, they haven't really focused on that at all. So, like, like I was saying, like, we pointed to these moments and we said, but we never thought, like, she was pure evil. And that's what that was, was fucking evil. It's like Davos. You got to the Prince Walsh. Your God is evil. Like, that's like, she was burning, like, just innocent people. And that was never her character. It also, like, strategically didn't make sense. But that's why, like, it had to. I could have. Because it was over. 
but seeing all those moments from the past, the seasons, if it played out like we said, where it takes her multiple episodes after Masande to dissolve, like and just completely break down, not just one scene with Tyrion, or if it was they were losing and she had to do that, you can point to those like saying she's made some questionable decisions depending on how you want to view the situation, like on impulse. And that would make more sense. But this was ding, 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 ding. Remember what I told you to do? Bell's ringing. We won. And this was like, I'm still going to do it. It could have, if it was just done better, I think this, I would have had a whole different perspective on this episode. I would have been, instead of being mixed on it, I would have been, I would have thought this episode was fantastic. Except for maybe a couple other parts, Euron related. And <sighs> Euron. Cersei. Uh, but Cersei's more of a season of a whole thing, but we'll mm-hmm. get to that. I so. hate to be overdramatic, but this, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm t- I tend to be overdramatic. I wonder how it's going to be for me going back and watching the show because I, when I was doing this review, I we cut together a clip from episode three of season one, and it's where Daenerys is learning Dothraki, and she looks so innocent. She's trying to pronounce these words, and I'm like, I know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you become. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could watch that anymore because I never, I've never been a fan of the Mad Queen conceptually. But if you were going to do it. It needed to be a heartbreaking moment, like Anakin turning to Darth Vader. It should have been like that. Where <laughs> They didn't even do that well. No, no, they didn't do that well. It should have been a moment where, wow, I, this is heartbreaking that this has happened to this character. And I believe it because everything that the weight of the world just collapsed on top of her and she just couldn't handle it anymore. We I'm also... convinced that she would go crazy Mm -hmm. that would have been heartbreaking for me but i didn't feel that like you said it was hollow as soon as she started burning down king's landing we never saw her face or her expression we just saw the dragon overhead they did a little 2014 gods godzilla there where it was just the people on the ground it was their perspective and cersei's did you want to see i yeah yeah, i wanted to see what she was like just what her face looked like like maybe i don't know like crying maybe they went to lengths to dehumanize her in that moment because she went crazy and then suddenly flipped to making Cersei more human in her last moments. I did love, one of the things that I loved about this episode was just the look on Cersei's face when she's like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> she was stunned. Which, she really did... called my bluff on huh? <laughs> Right, she was like, well, this escalated quickly. I can't quickly. believe that Cersei didn't have like any other plan. She was like, we just have to get the dragon with, with, the, with the scorpion. We just have to do it. So that's like one of the things too where I'm just so conflicted because I love, like I said before, how he saw Drogon at his full might, absolutely strategically destroy the Iron Fleet, destroy the Scorpions, open the gate. Like, that's awesome. It but, was awesome. But yes. at the same time, I'm like, there's no, there's no, con- like, they're just bullying <laughs> Cersei and the Lannister army. And it's beating a dead horse. I wanted her to have some tricks up her sleeves. I wanted her to be, I said, like, you wanted her to go, Daenerys to go to the Red Keep. Mm-hmm. I wanted maybe Cersei to have it surrounded with wildfire. And it's kind of like, they, no one's too, everyone's too scared to make the first move because if you come with the dragon, I set this off, everyone dies. If And vice versa, if she sets it off, I'll burn you with the dragon. It's so just, it's kind of like the standoff yeah. where anything, the tensions are rising and anything can happen. And it was more smaller, compact, and it played more to character moments rather than this absolute this at disaster. But at the same time, I loved the disaster in the streets. <laughs> I love to see like everyone's yeah. perspective. And it was like, it was heartbreaking. To, to see what Daenerys was actually capable of and what she was doing, but still the reasoning for it does not work for me, and that kind of muddles my thoughts when it comes to this episode. This could have been a masterpiece if they Techn- just made Technically, it. Technically, it was probably the... Was it the yeah, right? but I'm just talking about the way that it makes you feel seeing yes. from, the, from the ground perspective how disturbing it was to watch these people run for their lives. Oh, yeah, I felt bad after this episode, me personally. And yeah, I feel like, bad for myself. Like, I should have been feeling bad for the characters. It's not like bad like, like after you watch an episode me? and you feel bad for what's happened to everyone. It's like this just made me feel bad. I, I couldn't agree more. That's exactly <laughs> how I felt. I said it out loud. I was like, I, I'm disturbed by what I'm watching because I'm not emotionally invested in it. I'm disturbed for myself. <laughs> I'm disturbed that I'm not disturbed by this. And Also, like, I can't... Cersei never once thought that maybe, maybe she's the just dragon, an idiot i mean maybe but like, ugh, like i mean she's made idiotic dragons, decisions before dragons can fly and she never thought maybe this dragon will get to the red key 
<laughs> it's like, yo, Grace, all the Lannister men have thrown down their soldiers. What about the elephants? <laughs> Grace, the elephants are not coming. When Kyburn is like, she's like, no one's ever gotten to the Red Keep. or Like, the Red Keep has never fallen. And he's like, well, everything else has fallen. Also, they are in the Red <laughs> they're, Keep. They're in the Red Keep. Like, Want to go to Magor's Holdfast? I like that <laughs> reference. No, she had no plan. Which doesn't make sense for her. But she's been dominating this war since season seven, right? The only loss that she's had was spoils of war. So they've been building her up. We've been seeing the memes. What if Cersei just ends up on the throne because she's the best at playing the game? Give her something. Yeah. You have a writer's room of people that have been working on the show for years. You can't think of something clever enough. You, you're you're in a fantasy world. Give us something. Give, have Euron whip out the dragon horn. <laughs> yeah. At this point, right? At this point, I'm ready for anything. If bring, they, out, bring out the Krakens. If they didn't kill Rhaegal and they waited for that and he it was Rhaegal versus Drogon, that could have been... A little more even, because we said it too. Like you're like, all right, she still has a dragon, but the way they took out uh, uh, Rhaegal last episode, heat seeking missiles. It's like, <laughs> oh, you know, they have a bunch of these things. It's kind of even now. <laughs> it wasn't even, and I, and I but I still. Love, That's why it's inconsistent. I still love the how they. He, but it's inconsistent that they get three perfect shots on Rhaegal, and then they. Well, can't they were even... sitting there. Wait, it's different than when you're in the middle of war. But and also, she's using the sunlight. But that's also moving blinded. at a, an extremely fast pace. I'm just saying. Okay, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm playing devil's advocate while still like trying to rational. keep your sanity. Yeah, but uh, no, it's um, if you go crazy right now, it's not justified. Hasn't been enough development. Are you kidding me? Go back <laughs> and listen to these fucking podcasts. It's like we'll go podcast by podcast. Yeah, it's, it's a meme going around. I think it's insane that it hasn't happened already. <laughs> um, but let's see, what was I going with? Oh yeah, just Cersei in general. Like she did nothing this season. Absolutely nothing. She looked good. Fantastic. Yeah, the fits were. She drank a little. She smirked. She was like, I got this. And That's then sex. it's like narrator. She did not got it. She <laughs> she did not get it. <laughs> um, got it. It was not. That's the most disappointing thing. I like I we talked about this on the review. I don't know if you agree or not. It's I don't hate how Jamie and Cersei were together when they died. I, I just, hate it. I just hate that Cersei had nothing to do this season. I think Cersei deserved a better death. I, Cersei deserved to go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. And that she died in a blaze of glory. <laughs> a but, literal blaze. But it was, she went out on her own terms in a way that I'm going to go out swinging too. But it was kind of like sad and like kind of. Cold. I wasn't even sad for Just them. I was sad for myself again because I was, I was like, like, these are two of my favorite characters. I was characters. sad for Jamie's character development. I was, I literally, until the ceiling started collapsing, I was like, okay. I was waiting for his actual hand to disappear and then he was gonna like knife her or something i kept waiting for it and it never happened no i think just give her a mercy kill almost maybe like moment, i would like, have watching, even been fine with a mercy kill. watching like everything the lannister and their family built deteriorate in front of them and they're just together in that moment i think that's an i don't hate that i hate that cersei had nothing to do this episode and this season and i hate the lead up with jamie with you on that kind of that, that was that threw me off too. I wasn't expecting that fight, yeah. and as it was happening, I'm like, "When is it going to end?" Yeah. I, for a second, I thought Jamie was going to die there. I would have fucking. I was. Been... If that happened, I think I would have turned off the TV and stopped <laughs> watching. You're on fucking stinks, <laughs> and they don't have to have that moment. He he can die. I don't need to see. Like he doesn't need to die for me. Like I don't have to see it. Just get rid of him. It's and like how conveniently that he just like appeared on that, that show. That happens all the time. So I kind of give that a pass, but okay. the fact that it like was your on it's like, "Oh, I fucked the queen." And you're like, "Oh, you son of a bitch. Let's fight." Oh man. Yeah, I got to fight you now. Yeah. Should have been just street fighter. I I just wish Jamie would have just got to Cersei without having that moment. And then it, I think like with the Reigns of Casimir playing, like they're together, but they're someone made this I forgot who made this point. So actually uh, I like it though. It's um Lindsay Ellis. No. <laughs> I think it was Kendrick, but uh, the song of the Reigns of Casimir is about how they decimated a whole entire fa um, family because, like, they tried to go against the Lannisters, and that's kind of happening to them. Everything they built is deteriorating while that song is playing. It's a very nice moment, but everything leading up to it didn't feel deserved. I just, if they were gonna end up dying together like that, why have Jaime go fight for the North and leave Cersei? So him leaving Cersei in season seven felt definitive. It I should thought, have been, too, I, man. I thought if they were going to see each other again, he was going to kill Especially her. Especially after what he saw on the long night. Yeah, and That's him and horrifying. Brienne, it's such a big deal that he was with a woman who wasn't Cersei. Even and we, when, now we look like clowns for saying, oh, he's on a mission. 
Like, and he just didn't want Brienne that to scene, stop him. That scene felt like, to me at least, like him leaving Brienne. I thought what we said last week that he was just like didn't want Brienne to follow him and he was going to go kill Cersei. That scene didn't feel like him actually reverting no. to him loving Cersei again. But or like, he, or maybe he never stopped. But I think so. I mean, we've seen it throughout this character. It's the perspective that changed on Jaime, not his character himself. He's always been and that this was guy. a horrendous thing to do. What? To somebody that you quote unquote love for Cersei to betray the North. Yeah. It's one thing to betray them, but then maybe the threat's not as big as the North claimed. But, but people Jamie act like, saw an army of hundreds of thousands of zombies. But people act like Jamie wouldn't have thrown a kid out of a window in season four if they found him and Cersei. And the stakes were still the same. He would have. Yeah, but that was different because Cersei at that point wasn't putting people's lives at risk, mm-hmm. blowing up churches. She was just kind of a an asshole who was married to the king. And he had to make that decision to save her life. That was before she betrayed him numerous times, used him, manipulated him, treated him like garbage. And then you made the point that Jamie seeing the Whites for the first time should be, where, I thought, even though you yeah. think it was definitive him leaving Cersei, but that should just cement it. Yeah, I think him seeing the Whites should have been, I made the right decision coming here. Leaving Cersei was the right decision for me. Well, I think he, well they just he, throw he out could... the violent car prophecy as well. Yeah. And that ties into Cersei not having a plan. Maybe if Cersei does have a plan, like your whole wildfire theory, mm-hmm. oh, she's going to do this again. I have no choice. I have to be the one to kill her. And George, that, that clip of George R. R. Martin going around of him saying that one out of 100 readers will guess the end, but now because of the internet, it spreads all around. Mm-hmm. Don't change it just because people are expecting it to happen. No, I, I agree. Because I think look that, at Jon Snow coming back to life. That was one of the best moments of the show. But in that moment, like, once it was set up, like, everything was going down and Daenerys was burning the city and there was nothing for Jaime to stop by killing Cersei, I kind of, like, if that was the plan, then them dying together in that moment, I don't hate. Valencar would have been cool if it was a, a standoff where he had to do something to save, uh, to stop maybe Daenerys from doing that. But if they were always going to do it, then it really doesn't fit. There's no reason to kill Cersei. And I don't hate, I honestly, even though we were wrong, and I, I don't what love... What do you hate? <laughs> a lot of things. I don't hate the fact that he kind of, that's always his character. Like, hearing that, knowing that Daenerys is probably going to attack King's Landing, where your sister is, the only woman you've really loved with your unborn child, that's still, it's going to bring back a lot of things that you have tr- thought you were over. But once you hear that, yeah, that's Yeah, but that's not like, like a breakup where it's like, you know, this isn't working out. This is like you've betrayed me for the millionth time. <laughs> I know. You're a psychopath. That's, I'm that's clearly his cat- a better person than you are. In the show, that's but always that's, been his, his So then way. characters just don't change in the I, world of Game of Thrones. I mean, I, I don't their know. relationship I, was abusive emotionally, physically. Yeah, like, even without her committing mass up. murder. <laughs> It's yeah, it's a messed up relationship. I thought him leaving her was him breaking out of that cycle, and yeah. I thought yeah. he wouldn't go back. And I if did. they, if he did go back, it would be him killing her, and it would be like finally putting an end to it. And he could maybe whatever die with her or move on. It would have been putting an end to the mm. cycle. And instead, he was like, "I'm gonna embrace the cycle with my whole heart." And I like the idea of them both finding what they were looking in each other in different places. Where mm-hmm. Cersei was always looking at Jaime for his power, his status as a man. She becomes queen. She doesn't really need that anymore. Jaime was always looking for to be looked upon as an honorable man, to be truly viewed as a knight. And he got that by going north, by fighting bravely, by being respected by somebody like Brienne, who's probably the most honorable character in the show. They both found what they were looking for in different people and different things and the fact that they come back together like that it does bother me I don't like it I don't like them dying by a bunch of bricks either I don't know I don't bricks. understand why D&D we have to wait for the books because mm-hmm. maybe the Valencar prophecy just doesn't come true but well, they them, left it out of the show they left it out of the show deliberately but it goes back to them saying and I, I don't hate Arya killing the Night King because I don't think it's that big of a deal but the fact that they're like oh we knew people would expect Jon Snow to do it it probably should have been Jon Snow because they shared. Think it, I think it should have well, they been made, Jon They Snow. created that yeah. problem when they created the Night King. I guess, but still, the look that the Night King gives Jon Snow at Hardhome, thinking this is somebody, th- there's something there, there's a connection there. Is that really a problem? Because if Jon would have killed the Night King, then problem solved. Once again, I don't mind Arya killing the Night King because I think it was a great moment. But they, they have this tendency to do that, where it's if the fans are ahead of the show, then we're just going to change it. Like George says, you're foreshadowing these moments, and then they don't happen. That It's not lazy writing. It's just... Well, you never know how they want it ridiculous. to. Ridiculous. Because they did not include the Valonqar, so maybe this is just the idea the whole time. It's something where 
then why are you adapting the books then? <laughs> like, the source material is better than I what just, you're doing. There is no fucking books. I, I, D&D's made a lot of mistakes, and we've called them out for especially they stuff outlines. stuff in season <laughs> five. But George gets a pass. He does get a pass. He does get a pass. And it's yeah. mind-boggling. He's not. He doesn't know how to tie it up either. They're doing the best they can of what they got, and it hasn't been perfect. But, I mean, George... People forget, too, how... Um, I love George. Big George guy. Feast, Feast for Crows was received. People hate Feast for Crows. Is that the most recent one? No, no. that's the fourth book. I like Feast. There are five, right? I like Feast, too. Yeah, there are five. But people don't like the last two as much because they think that he just added too many subplots. And Feast for Crows, it's like ten chapters of Brienne and Podrick. Like, hey, have you seen Sansa? You know where Sansa is? <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't love those books. People forget that because there's so much time between them. But yeah, no, he he does get a pass. And if you're going to give them this source material, then maybe the books should have been done. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, it's like seeing Jamie find his way back to Cersei, Cersei seeing him and just like having all that emotion like pour out of her, like seeing everything deteriorate and she has Jamie there. And it's kind of like I, I just I don't love it, but I still kind of I kind of empathize with that. You know, I those kind of a, that, that agree moment. because yeah, when Stoneheart. when they saw each other for the first time, I was like, "This is kind of nice." Yeah. But also, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Season eight, then. Like she's sure. crying, like she's seeing Jamie, like even though she's partially because like, I was sent, like trauma. She sent Bron to <laughs> kill him, kill him, kill Jamie a couple episodes ago. But in that moment, seeing what their life has become and having Jamie there in that moment it's like when she probably thought she would never see him again yeah that's I like that kind of those moments but but it was like everything out of context of what it didn't make sense in the context of like everything that was happening like isolated I can appreciate it mm-hmm. but when I think about it in the show I'm just like well when you when Jamie you should have killed her. when you add together that you're on scene and Cersei having nothing to do this season having just getting decimated this episode it kind of takes away from that moment where the moment itself I can really appreciate, but I, my main flaw is that Cersei drank wine and looked out of her window. <laughs> Literally the whole time. Or like off of like a, a patio. She was just like... Like one of my main things, like, like right, Night King's dead. Let's get Cersei. She has that moment where she orders Masane to die. That's, the th- that's it. And if this is the fate of the White Walkers in the book, I still don't hate episode three. I don't. But my anticipation, like yours, was we're getting rid of the Night King. They have something great in store for Cersei Lannister. They didn't. Well, I think... Like, so I can I can understand why people will be even more frustrated with the Long Night, removing the character of the Night King, removing the White Walkers in general. And I still think there might be something to the prequel show that they held back a bit to establish that show. And if they did, I will be so pissed. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> that would be ridiculous. I'd rather be the way it was than have something come, go do a prequel to explain it but but even with the white walkers it still feels like man there was so much potential for that lore what happened there well it's it's seven episodes and six episodes for the last two seasons. yeah i guess so right um and i do think that's a major problem of this series man looking back well that's like when i when they when they when that happened they killed the night king i'm like all right let's let's get back to cersei we're gonna have it it's gonna end smaller more personal and I guess we're getting that, but it's with Daenerys. Did we mention this, though, or is this before we recorded, that Dan and Dave should have handed the reins off to somebody else? I think this is before we recorded, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Dan and Dave, I made the point just before that it's obviously an exhausting show to make. Mm-hmm. It took two years to make six episodes. There have been reports saying that HBO wanted more seasons, that they were willing to throw more money at them. This should have been, at the very least, a nine-season show with 10 episodes in each season. You needed more time to develop these stories, whether it's the White Walkers, whether it's Daenerys, whether it's Cersei. You needed more time. And I always make the case, the actors still look good. And I think that if you keep throwing money at them, this show is only going to grow and grow and grow. You could still have the same beats that we've seen the past two seasons, but with more in between them, I think it would have helped. Like, we still could have seen Mad Queen. We still could have had the Night King die. But if you have a few more episodes in between those ha- those happening... And maybe just developing it a brand? little more. 
I think Bran's yeah, gonna go Bran off. Yeah, Bran is so disappointing. I was so <laughs> into what Bran was gonna do. I love Bran the first two episodes and, of the season, and I'm upset that he's not doing anything. He's looking at Tyrion. Oh, did Tyrion betray this one? He's looking at Jaime. Ah, oh, what, what's going on? I think on he has here? something up his sleeve for next episode. Uh, we've been saying that since like season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this, this next episode, Bran's gonna do something. Well, your theory is that in order to get Drogon out of the picture, he's gonna warg into Drogon, right? I don't think that's gonna happen though. That's so <laughs> that'd be like too cool. Um, <laughs> It's like why uh, don't they give him anything cool to do? <laughs> it's, he literally. Has I was thinking like, like John versus seeing. John versus Daenerys. It's like their first interaction is going to be we like what what is that going to be like? She's probably going to have them like swear swear fealty, and John's gonna be like ah uh, no. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean uh, I'm, I am pr- imagine John's. I'm, really but then it's like she has Drogon. We've seen what Drogon was able to do to a prepared army, and like how do you beat Daenerys with Drogon at this moment? Even if you kill Daenerys, it's like Drogon's probably not going to be cool with that. It's like so you need so, you need to take out Drogon somehow, and what what way would that be? John's just gonna fucking scream at it like he did with Viserion. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense. Or I guess. Drogon switches allegiances. Gary from SpongeBob. Just it's a Chris Pratt moment sides. from Jurassic World. <laughs> He's like, whoa, big fella. <laughs> well, yeah, whoa, you don't know about Drogon. Like, Dragon's supposed to be like really, really smart. So he's probably like, Mom, what'd you make me? Do? What'd you make me do? Well, he might be a psycho too. He's Psychos like, can I get a lozenge? <laughs> <laughs> you had a cough drop, Ma. I, you know, it'd be funny if John was really submissive in this episode. <laughs> Daenerys is like, "What's up, bitch? <laughs> Bend the knee." Quick, wait, quick question about you know John and Daenerys. So is John just like, is he weird that is he weird about the fact that she's his aunt? They've never discussed it. Not about the fact that they are related. Yeah, why isn't he hitting that? They've only discussed that she like she doesn't like that he's technically the heir to the Iron Throne, understandably. But like. <laughs> He's he's not like still love you, but I don't like that. They've never discussed the whole like we're related thing. So when he keeps like rejecting her, is it because they're related? And he's like, I'm not about that. He says that he loves her too. I think I think he knows like the state she's in in that in that moment, and he's kind of like, let's take a step back here. Let's, what about uh, after the party that they were celebrating them all being alive? Maybe he's just got ED. <laughs> well, no that that was his reflection. That off. was that was his. I think that aligns more what you just said. Like they didn't, act, like, he didn't really say like, "Oh, so you're my aunt." Like, how does this mean for us? But in that scene in uh, episode four, when they kind of break apart, it's like, "Oh, we got to talk about this." Like she alludes to like the elephant in the room. So I feel like the moment in episode five is more just, "Are you okay? Like, are you okay? You haven't been eating." People I thought you were asking you. me. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. One, I've never really bought into John and Daenerys as a couple. I've never believed that they were actually in love with each other. So never we supported in, it. In season seven, we said that was a little... It seemed like, oh, now they're together mm-hmm. because the show is like, they're together now. So They're both like attractive, so it's like, why not? I when think she, that's their whole philosophy. When she's like, am, am I only a queen to you or is that all I am? And then he kind of just like looks at her and then she's like, okay, fear it is then. I was like, what happened? You're also my favorite aunt. I'm assuming it's because of the aunt thing. Yeah. And also, but they won't tell us. They like, do that a lot this season. They're just not telling us things. There are conversations that we're like missing out on. And I feel like I feel like we're getting the scenes that you're not supposed to see. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I I, I I don't hate it. No, I I don't hate that scene. It's just like I think we should have got more of Daenerys kind of spiraling, not just a couple scenes before it happens. But Masande dies, and we have like two or three episodes where you actually see her progressively get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, I did enjoy when she's looking out the window and she's all like drawn and pale. I like that. <laughs> and then not much else. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the scene where Daenerys looks like she's about to jump out the window. <laughs> Besides that. <laughs> um, also, I feel like uh, Varys just going up to Jon and being like, hey, you want to be the king now? Was like a, a Ned season one moment. Well, people were saying that he might have been trying to poison her with the little bird. Once that didn't work and she said that she was being watched, that he's like, all right, it's the only thing I can do to try to stop this is try to convince John. It's the last that Jeffrey, I'm probably going to die for this, but I can't sit back and let Was he happen. like telling mad people about, <laughs> he burned that one note when he heard them coming to his. Oh, he was probably sending it all. But I was assuming, yeah, I assumed he had sent a whole bunch of them before that. Yeah. And I think he was up against the clock too. That's why he just shot a shot he knew that Daenerys was going to burn down King's Landing within the next couple of days it's just like so to this me is it his seemed last ditch effort. like 
I mean, I guess, but it just didn't seem like a Varys thing for him to just go up to John and be like, say, well, hey. Well, I also think he knew he was he was dead. It was a combination of that, that this is my only shot. I'm thinking of like some random lord in the Riverlands receiving that raven. <laughs> Who the fuck is Jon Snow? What the hell? <laughs> I don't understand. Aegon Targaryen? <laughs> Isn't he dead? Yeah. Was he killed by the, by the mountains? What do we do? I guess we gotta go fight. For who? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stay home. Yeah. Red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, the thing is, too, it's like John's the warden of the north at this point. Who Whose support does he need? He's got the veil. Um, Sansa better have an episode next week. She's going to be like, oh, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but the meme with Jonah Hill. And he's just like, so something really super not chill happened last <laughs> night. Tyrion and John showing up in a Winterfell. But also, John has the Winterfell army, right? The I ones who came Northerners, with him? Yeah. Like, who does Sansa have to defend the North right now? Brienne. <laughs> he probably left, like, a small group there, but I don't think, after what happened, I don't think they're expecting anybody to, like, Theon try think, to come and take Winterfell. It's like, I think, I think Daenerys safe. is, you know, if she's going to go crazy, she's probably just might, she's going to be like, well, you know, your sister doesn't like me. Might as well go burn Winterfell, too. Hey, you know, you, you, you know who I miss? I miss <laughs> your <laughs> sister. <laughs> Let's go see her. Let's and then John's going to be like, uh... Uh, okay. Well, Arya, too. I mean, she was in the thick of things. She got that first-hand perspective. Oh, and you know she hates Daenerys at this point. Yeah. Davos, John. Well, Davos, Tyrion. yeah, like you said with Melisandre, he just, she just did Melisandre times a million. <laughs> <laughs> so the speech that... Davos might die. But it's like, like even when Stannis did it in Melisandre, it's like, they're trying to do this so they might win. Daenerys won already. Yeah, right. <laughs> just like, here we go. If they were delusional. Yeah. It's almost what, it's the same thing. Their backs were against the wall. They had this one last ditch effort to try and win, and they burned a kid alive. Yeah, it's Daenerys not you're not justifying it, but you can, like, in their, like, mental state in Stannis, what we've seen, we've seen him just deteriorate as a person, and the way Melisandre has manipulated him over the years, it's like, okay, that's not a stretch. Um, wow, Mad Stannis, better than Mad Queen. <laughs> and so it's, I'm just like, like, like what does Tyrion do? Like, is he is like, hey, Dan- Daenerys? Um, now, Marissa, if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm Tyrion, I'm like, once I see Daenerys, I'm like, yeah, I free Jamie. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm, uh, yeah, seriously. <laughs> Should have just let them execute me in season four. That's what it feels like. Uh, I don't know. I'm still excited to see how it plays out, though, next episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely I'm excited. I just, I'm excited to see the interactions. And I still like kind of like. I, it's weird. I just. I like some things. I hate some things. I don't know if it will. I can say that I, I don't like this episode. I, I would go as far as say, I don't want to be one of these because there's so many YouTubers out there that are just making 30 minute videos of them screaming the entire time. And mm-hmm. listen, you, you got to do what you got to do. People I mean, seem, we're also kind of doing that right now. Right. But <laughs> for the whole season, we, we've we done this on the channel all the time. We try to see the positives and everything. And, you know, even look like looking on my Twitter feed, I mostly talk about movies and shows that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. If I see something and I don't like it, I just don't talk about it. Unless it's like that so bad where you're kind of like i have to talk well the like worst serenity thing, i'm like i need to talk about it <laughs> that was hilarious yeah i have to say truthfully this is one of my least favorite episodes of the entire series because this is such um an important episode for the show overall that so many character arcs came to an end and i'm never going to get this episode out of my mind when i watch the show now it's every episode when i see a character that ended their arc in this episode i'm going to think about how disappointed i was and that's just, I guess, what it is now. I had the same problem with The Last Jedi. And I, I get, I've i kind of cooled on that, but I used to say I can't go back and watch the original Star Wars because I just hate what they did with Luke Skywalker. And I think what they did with Daenerys here was worse. Because I'm a big Daenerys guy, man. I love Daenerys. But I've always, like how I'm kind of able to maybe get past that is I've always had the idea of Mad Queen ever since people started theorizing. And I thought, oh, that could be a very interesting storyline. And... We kind of didn't get the in between as much as I would have liked to properly develop that, but it still happened. And I think her actions, even though they weren't really, you said they were hollow, right? Even if they were properly developed to to the way that we would have liked, it still would have happened, I guess, the same way. So me looking forward to the next episode, I'm like, all right, that just that's happened. Like she's Mad Queen. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's we were gonna get to this point anyway. Yeah, and I still, like I said. 
don't like how it happened, but now that it has but happened... It, it still changes your perspective. Like, when I say when you go back and watch the episodes, you can watch those earlier Daenerys seasons if this was properly developed and think, oh, you know, I can see where the cracks... I can see the cracks in the armor. I can see the descent. But I'm never going to see it because it is what it is. It wasn't developed well enough. Maybe a retrospective, when you rewatch it, you can... Maybe certain I things... Finger. But certain <laughs> things that you might not have pointed to, maybe... When you go back and know what's going to happen, you're like, oh, wait, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at a certain point, we should have been like, yeah, she's going to do this. Not like everyone around her going, she's going to do this. Well, like but when we're she, still kind of. When yeah, she everybody just it. kept telling us it was going to happen yeah. rather than them showing us. But even and when Randall and Dickon, I'm pretty sure we said like, eh, that was a little, that was not a smart decision. Maybe it's a little. But again, that's. But I, it was also like, you can live if you just get on your knee. Yeah. No, like no, her, no, like, with no, the you're... slave owners, I feel like her killing the Tarleys was like a bad political move, yeah. maybe, but not so much moral. Like it's war. No, 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 I get that too. But I like when that first happened, and like, oh, maybe I thought it might have been something where, like we explained before, back against the wall, last ditch effort, or just something being at such a catalyst where it makes sense, or it's just more, I guess, more develops. But doesn't it feel like Cersei and Jaime aren't dead? It feels like they didn't even die. As I wasn't far as I'm s- concerned, Jamie will live forever. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. When characters die in the show, you usually you're mourning for them. Every major character death has been so emotional. Rob Stark, Ned Stark, Catelyn, Tywin, even the main characters when they die, it feels like Cersei and Jamie. We didn't even like give them a tribute on our review. Kind of just slipped our minds. Well, Lena Headey, Nikolaj Costa Waldo, two of the best performances that the show has had to offer, and we just kind of forgot about it because the Daenerys thing was so over, anticlimactic. Well, Daenerys yeah. overshadows everything. It did, yeah. That's like something where... It was almost... We gave Conleth Hill a bigger tribu- tribute than Lena Heath. <laughs> I know. Because it happened earlier in the episode. Yeah. But you I, hated... Uh, guess we'll go to this real quick. We've been talking about Daenerys so much. You hated the Clegane Ball? Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought um, the Clegane Ball was a meme <laughs> and it was never going to happen. Um, And then it did happen and I was like, this kind of sucked. It wasn't emotionally satisfying, really, for me at least. It was just, it was just sad. Like I was watching it, and I was sad. Like I felt, I felt bad for the hound. I thought that he's a sad individual. <laughs> the hound is like tragic. Yes, he's just drunk all the time. He's super scared of fire. The PTSD is real. He and Arya have had this sort of like almost father daughter type of relationship, and he's been looking out for her. Like I think it was episode two, and he's like, "I looked out for you, didn't I?" Right? I think that's when he said it. Fought for you. Yeah. And like the little moment they had when he tells her to go, even though I I didn't agree that Arya should just leave like that. Him just (laughs) trying to kill the mountain and not being able to do it. And the mountain (laughs) just pulling, like he pulls the knife out of his chest, his head. It was like tragically funny. (laughs) I felt so bad for the hound. I was like, you deserve better than this. (laughs) It is kind of funny when you think of that. Like, oh, come on. (laughs) I was right in the eye. (laughs) He, I think he said that. He was like, I he literally got you in the head. I like the Clegane Bowl. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous, but I love it. <laughs> I, I like the end of, for the Hound. Yeah. It's I, like I, when I, he yeah. was, like you were saying, like Arya shouldn't be there. I, I, I don't I would necessarily... agree with you in that the castle was crumbling. So yeah. I think the Hound thought Arya was going to get out of it. Yeah, no, I don't, I, just, I don't, I think Initially, for Arya, the castle that would, was crumbling. That was something she always, like, she, she wants to kill the queen, so... I get her going with the hound and try to do that, but once it starts going to shit and the hound's like, uh, get out of here unless you want to die, look at me and all these things, I was kind of like, hound, take your own advice. Yeah, like, I wanted him to take his own advice. Yeah. I didn't want him to be ultimately defined by this tragedy he had suffered, and he was. And It's a tragic end to the character. Sometimes that's just life. What was the hound going to go do? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly <laughs> don't know. That's what we always kept saying about it Arya. Might, it might just be like this episode with so many people... Instead of breaking out of their cycles, just like they're just trapped, they're trapped, and it was just like again and again. And like with the hound, I was like, I'm tired of this. Yo, this is literally what Westworld season two said about humanity it's that they're in stuck in loops, they can't break out of them, they're passengers, and they're worthless. <laughs> Game of Thrones is like, hold our Starbucks coffee cup, <laughs> and we've got one on deck. Thank you to Starbucks. You know what's funny? That wasn't even a Starbucks cup, and they just got fucking millions of free publicity from <laughs> Billions, that. Billions, they say. 
Shout out. <laughs> I like I like the cable. That's when he killed Kyburn. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah. Kyburn's, death, <laughs> Kyburn's was... death was funny. And even, <laughs> even too when he's like, so he, Gregor. Yeah, he, <laughs> obey your queen. He kind of just like oh, wait, and he's not Frankenstein's monster. He has his like he still remembers. And it's like when season seven when the hound like gets in his grill and he's like ah you remember me right and he's just like breathing at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I never actually thought the Hat Mountain still remembered any like I he had an, I guess he had an idea but like he didn't have any like emotion towards past events and I said on the review that I, I kind of liked that though the mountain remembered because it would have just been one sided and I mean really yeah. stupid I liked, that the Hound they, is trying to kill the zombie yeah. where the zombie is like who are you yeah if they were gonna fight and the Hound like the Mountain just didn't know who the Hound was mm. that would have been even worse mm. even though. <laughs> Cersei just like tiptoeing past him. That was funny. Yeah. She was like, excuse me. <laughs> Interesting would... idea. Kyburn can resurrect people and they keep all their memories. The Night King can't. Science. Kyburn is the Night King. Kyburn is a better <laughs> Night King than the Night King ever wished he could be. Well, it took him like a fucking month to get so okay, regular. Back well, up. yeah. Quantity, quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, Sir Gregor, right? And Sandor. Yeah. I did. I actually liked the fact that he sent her away. That's one of the things that I liked. I liked everything about Arya the Hound in this episode. That moment itself, I liked. Arya, for the first time in a while, looked really young, looking yes. up at him like that, which you was nice. See it in her eyes. She's a great actress. Yeah, man. Maisie, Maisie Williams is great. Even her running around through the city was awesome. I also, yeah, I liked those scenes. I just, I it. Her rolling up to King's Landing like that made me think of when she took down House Frey. And of course, it's not nearly the same scale. Circumstances are different. But she had a plan for that. Like, she did it strategically. And I don't know if maybe things in King's Landing just deteriorated too quickly for her to actually get anything done. I don't know. What do you think about Jon Snow in this episode and how he's going to react? And how he did react, him holding back his soldiers, him, that tension between him and Grey Worm in the middle of the battle. It felt like that, that's another thing that I hated about the Mad Queen. It was just a reason for John to betray her. John's looking around, it's, it's saving Private Ryan, everything's moving slow. But when that's, their reactions I liked too. Like when she f- decides to do it. Tyrion had the best reaction. And Tyrion's like, what? Tyrion's. And John's like, Davos is flabbergasted, Grey Worm is like, fuck it. This is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, reaction, was it. the reactions were so great. And just them witnessing being on the ground, having that perspective on the destruction Daenerys is bringing, that was all very well done. I really like that. So it's hard for me, like you said, to say this episode is bad because there are things I don't like about it, but there's so, so yeah, much but you good. like it's, the it's, reactions to something that's was that wasn't set rushed. up properly yeah but that's it's like, i don't know what it's called is it a paradox like what's what like <laughs> what, what supersedes but what? i don't like the reactions because i don't feel they're earned you can like the acting i like think they look the very fact surprised. that everyone in this episode acted so well right that's is it's, what yeah. sort of pulled it off they were so close to having this absolute 10 out of 10 best episode we've probably ever seen but they just needed a couple more things to go right. I I disagree with that. I think they needed a lot of things to go right. I don't even think no, this the, is a season eight problem. What I think they, this is a show problem. Well, what they needed to go right was Daenerys' turn and probably Cersei's and Jamie's moment. Right, That's, but Daenerys' turn is something that needed to be set up for years that I, I don't think it's been set up properly. I think if it was a 10-episode season and that happened— Oh, 10 episodes. I thought you said 10 out of 10 episode. No, no, no. That's what I oh, said. Oh, okay, okay. It was cl- like okay, if this yeah. was a ten episode season, maybe yeah. This happened the penultimate, but Masane still happened in episode four, and you had those episodes to kind of play that out more and just watch her slowly but surely devolve into madness. This episode would have hit a lot hard- harder, especially for you and people who felt like it was a little sudden and empty. John is boring. <laughs> <laughs> that I disagree with. I love John Snow. No, I like John. It's just. I don't know. I feel like very suddenly everyone's like, John is the one who's going to lead everyone. And it's like he he doesn't want to. And will he? I don't know. I think Jon Snow ends up on the throne. I did like his reaction, though. To, I mean, that's you know, kind the of devastation. obvious, though, right? You don't think the Daenerys is going to win after that? No, no, no. And I think John ends up, my prediction here, John ends up on the throne. He grants the North independence and Sansa's queen in the North. And they just become two separate kingdoms at this point. It just works out better that way can try and build a peace maybe john is the one who tries to usher in a dream of spring and this also sets up the possibility of them 
returning to Westeros 30 years from now with old man Jon Snow. Something that we thought would never be possible because I, a lot of people thought Jon Snow was going to die, but maybe we'll see Westeros in 30 years, how they all react to what the fuck happened. If it's only an anthology, if it's like one season. I don't know. That's wild. Yeah, thinking about that, just Kit Harrington coming back like Luke Skywalker. He's in Bravos. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go and find him. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but other theories, like we talked about Drogon, maybe Bran helps out in some way. You will fly. There are so many things now in the in the show that they... John and Daenerys' kid foreshadowed so much in season seven. He literally said in season seven, it's like, I mean, how do you know that witch was telling the truth when she said you couldn't have children? Jorah saying, keep the sword, give it to your children. Daenerys telling Tyrion, I can't have children. Maybe she just can't have children. Maybe they're, <laughs> they're, trying they're to, just stressing that over They're trying over to tell again. you that she's not pregnant. Hello, Stop idiots. thinking about that she's going to have a baby. There's not going to be a baby. What if she does? She just pulls a Cersei. I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah. John's like, oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> this whole season. And I liked it up until this point, but man, this this just puts a black cloud over the season for me. The things I was giving the season like passes for earlier on, after this episode, I'm just like, mm, it's bad. I was like, okay, I just need to wait for the season to like unfold more before yeah. I like have a, an actual judgment on how these things are playing out. And now they've mostly played out. And I'm like, not good. I tweeted during the episode. Yeah, it was weird. I ne- right? I also check Twitter. I never check Twitter or like look at my phone during the episode. And <laughs> around the Clue Game Bowl, I was like, okay, let's see what people are saying about this. <laughs> I turn off my phone at the movie theater, dude. I never check my phone. I never check my watch. I tweeted twice during this episode. <laughs> That's a bad sign. No, I still, I don't know. I still like this. I, we, we both said we liked episodes one through four. And I'm very yes. split on this one. It's But this is important. This is an important it does, episode. I think, like, what I said when I liked The Long Night, got rid of the Night King. I don't give a fuck who he is. Let's focus on Cersei. But then she really had nothing to do after that. Have they, like, fumbled a penultimate episode in a season like this before? No. I can't immediately think of anything, because normally the penultimate episode is the best no. one. Beyond the Wall? Oh, yeah. Beyond the Wall. I yes. Didn't, I didn't like Beyond the Wall. Looking back, man, I'd, I'll take some Beyond the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'll take, I'll take a couple Beyond the Walls. <laughs> in hindsight, Beyond the Wall is awesome. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that wraps it up. Game of Thrones season. Why eight are you acting eight? like you hate the whole season now? You literally said <laughs> in the last preview, it was like, you know what? I like this season. Oh, um, Her- I don't know if this is worth it, my- but you know, why didn't what happened to Heron Hall happen to the Red Keep? Well, there might be a reason for this that I just don't know. I just well, time with Lannister. Take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see maybe after. So my theory the aftermath is... The of it, maybe we'll see some the like preview, melted The preview, it looked like stones. she was walking out of the castle. So obviously, she didn't destroy yeah. all No, she was of obliterating it. buildings like they were yeah. nothing, though. She wasn't burning these buildings. Maybe it has to do I something with the infrastructure. I literally looked up, can stone be broken down by fire? And they can't, but like, it's possible to with fire to collapse a stone wall. Like it yes. is. In the show, they make such a big deal about Heron Hall not necessarily collapsing but melting and cracking and turning into, like, a human oven. Well, yes. if, if I'm not mistaken, Harrenhal is supposed to be, like, this state-of-the-art, like, absolute spectacle of a castle. And it was just cursed. And that's what happened. So they might have just done something differently in the foundation. I don't know. It's got to got expand the builder. Know. They were, like, they were taking down the Red Keep, and I just kept thinking about Harrenhal. You have this one really established example of a castle being taken down by Dragonfire. Yeah, I they're mean, not thinking about these things anymore. Can we shit on Euron some more? Because I fucking hate sucked. Euron. What was the point of Euron? He's the worst. It's like book Euron. Why couldn't they just give me that? So he's like That's a, a nitpick. He's a character. Oh no, we have a fucking whole ass <laughs> character that plays a huge part. Uh, well, they just made him a different character. Just it's so uh, they wanted to be like, oh look how crazy and bad I am. I can do anything. And then he ultimately and I'll kill did you. nothing. Like, you're on in the books, it's like, he doesn't have to say anything. Just the way people perceive him and the thoughts people have about him and how they approach him. You're like, oh, this guy. This guy will fuck you up with his eye patch. Somebody <laughs> tweeted, it was like, you're on Greyjoy died as he lived, making everyone go, ah, this fucking guy again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and the actor's mad cool. Ever see him on Instagram? He's pretty. He's like, yeah, he loves the show. And I still think it's like weird how much he really looks like Theon. It is weird, right? Yeah, that like was they look casting, so much actually. alike. He should have been Balor. I think if he had an eye patch, I'd have been like, you know what? Not bad. no. It's just, it's just a completely different character. He was there to serve the purpose of giving Cersei Lannister an ally. But he could have been it. a better character. In he general. could have done more. Cersei could have done more. They shouldn't have Euron and Jamie's fight. If they just made him serious. But I remember like fine. when we first saw and got reintroduced to What about him? the Golden Company? Oh god, hold on. When we first <laughs> got reintroduced to Euron in season seven after the six and he won the the King Smoot by talking about Theon's dick. <laughs> but when we got when he came back and the King's Landing had like that fresh outfit on, I was like, yeah, All right. Yeah, he just got back from H and M. It's like, Yeah, okay. I could see this Euron, but it just didn't get like didn't get any better, I guess, from that first uh reintroduction to him. Uh yeah, Golden Company got smoked, but I I still like that. Somebody tweeted Samuel Tarley killed more people than the Golden Company. Yeah. But I do like Drogon absolutely demolishing them. It's like, yeah, that's what should happen when you have a dragon. We we've been waiting to see this for all these years and Daenerys was hesitant. Why, that's to another do it. thing. It's like why have them? They could have been any. I guess I mean, it's it represents know, maybe, yeah, right. the str- like what you can do versus what you're willing to do. Same thing like in the real world with like No, but I mean like why even introduce them, but like you have It makes us believe that Cersei does have a chance here. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Golden Company. Should have got some elephants. Are you talking about the dragon? Yeah, they got fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I was going into this whole philo- <laughs> this <is> philosophical. Yeah. <laughs> you can do. <laughs> I tribe about what the dragons represent. <laughs> now. There's a great nerd writer video where he talks about why hasn't society progressed in Westeros, and it has to do with the dragons and how they've just fundamentally changed warfare. So society doesn't move forward because of the dragons interesting i'll put a link in the description to not that to something else to one of our videos so Lindsay <laughs> ellis nerd writer anybody else you know i've Ken been Jack. listening i love radio lab <laughs> had a great episode on loops the other day um <laughs> i hate your own i'll tell you what i'm taking a break from twitter after this season for like two months i've heard too many opinions i'm, I'm opinionated out man. <laughs> there's too much going back and forth about this and they love it. No, they it's hate fun. It. And but it's just it's a it's a lot. <laughs> and it's become too much. I miss just tweeting like jokes about like the Oscars and Amy Adams not having one. Yeah, <laughs> times are simpler then. All right, yeah. So let's wrap this up, guys. Nerd Soup Podcast Episode Five: The Bells. Great title. I do love the title. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I don't even have to say that because you guys are going to do it anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the first thing people do nowadays. Just comment. We get like twenty three comments before the video's been out for five minutes. It's amazing. 21 of them are first. First, yeah. <laughs> 21 firsts. So, yeah. Um, follow us on whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just just come back next week. We'll be here for the series finale of Game of Thrones. I'm trying to get excited about it. What's that? It's the family guy. Oh. When Stewie's kissing Stewie. Oh. <laughs> what a tie-in. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird reference. <laughs>